Hello again, session number 29. I'm still in my house. I'm assuming you're still in your house too. So um, let's just get all our limbs and joints warmed up. So I've got some energy ready to go. Let's just start off with that posture check. As usual, back of the head, shoulder blades, buttocks and heels up against the wall. Tailbone pointing down. So that tummy will pull up and pull in. Open up the hips, buttocks engaging, knees rolling out. Therefore, the arch of the foot will lift and the toes you're going to spread out. Weight even between the little toe, the big toe and the heels. And of course, the Pilates breathing full and wide into the ribs. So you're not interfering with that pull up and pull in. And then just taking a breath in and squeeze the shoulders up into the ears and breathing out to push down. Do a big squeeze up as you breathe in and breathing out to slide the shoulder blades down. So right up into the ears, get those shoulders moving, slide the fingertips down the seam of the trouser leg as you exhale. Keep the back of the head, the shoulder blades, the buttocks and the heels up against that imaginary wall. And then change that to a shoulder roll, forward, up and round and back and down. Get those shoulders moving. Big, big, big shoulder roll right up into the ears and then open the chest, slide those shoulder blades down your back. And then keep the chest open and squeeze the shoulders up. Stretch down and then put that big shoulder roll in. And then take it into a squat. Knees going straight forward over the toes with the chest up. And then hold briefly and push up again, nice and tall. You do a big squeeze up, a push down, and take the hips back and down. Knees going straight forward over the toes, all the weight into the heels, and then lengthen back up. Calf muscles, uh, rather thighs working, gonna work calves in a minute. So you do a squeeze up, push down, big shoulder roll into the squat. Make sure all the weight goes into the heels, so maybe you could actually lift your toes off the floor. So there's no weight going forward into the knees. And then pushing up nice and tall, then adding on. Do a squeeze up, a push down, a big shoulder roll. Take it back into the squat and hold. And then drop the head, drop the arms. Still sitting down on the low chair. Now push your hips up into the air, but keep the knees slightly bent. Arms close into the legs, let your breathing flow and slowly roll up. Shoulders back and down. You do your big squeeze up, push down, big shoulder roll, keeping the chest lifted, knees going straight forward over the toes, and then holding the sit and then drop the head. Push the hips up and keep the knees slightly bent so you're not locking the knees. Arms close into the legs and slowly come up. Shoulders back and down. So you're just incorporating your spine into this warm up. Squeezing up, stretching down. Get those shoulders moving. And sit, hold, changing slightly. See if you can lift your heels off the floor now. Balance. Pop the heels down. Drop the head. Push the hips up, keeping the knees relaxed. Slowly up, up, up against that imaginary wall. Back of the head coming up last. And again, squeeze up, push down. Big roll with the shoulders into the squat. Make sure those knees are directly forward. And then bring the heels off the floor and balance. Now see if you can keep your heels off the floor while you drop your head and your arms. Keep the heels off the floor while you push your hips up and then start to come up. Slowly, slowly, just let your breathing flow. Heels still off the floor if you can, if not you just put them down and then put the heels down. Then those calf muscles are going to work. Squeezing up, pushing down, big shoulder roll and then into that squat. Make sure the shoulders stay down. Then of course you can lift the heels if you can manage that. If not, just leave the heels down. Drop the head, hold. Keep the heels off the floor if you can. Start to push the hips up 
and then gently come up, just nice and slowly, all the way up, shoulders down. Now see if you can keep the heels off the floor, still balancing, make those calf muscles work, and then take it back down again, link by link, boom by boom. Hold and balance and dangle, keep the heels off the floor, and slowly, slowly come up again. Really hard work for those core muscles and calf muscles. And then bring the heels back down. Holding that there. Then bring the feet into first position, heels turned in and the toes turned out. Reaching the arms out to the side, side with the shoulders down. And then start to draw some circles with your fingertips on the walls at either side. Just small circles. Keep the heels turned in and the toes turned out, the shoulders are down. Back of the head, shoulder blades, buttocks and heels are still up against that imaginary wall and your chin down over your peach. Then what about lifting those heels up again? Keep the heels turned in and the toes turned out. And then maybe change direction with your arms circling. See if you can keep those heels off the floor, core muscles working to balance, as well as feeling those calf muscles work and shoulders possibly by now. Circling, circling. And then turn the palms forward, bring the arms forward and then turn the palms out and push back and open the chest. So the palms come forward, palms turn out. You've still got those heels off the floor if you can. Squeezing back, working that posture muscle across the upper back, opening the chest, squeeze back. Keep the shoulders down, keep the heels up, buttocks working, inner thighs working and of course your tummy to balance. Squeeze it back reach forward and then just bringing the heels down keep the chest open stretch your fingertips towards your toes and then bring the feet back into alignment again shoulders hips knees and ankles aligned and then keeping the hips pointing forward lift the right heel off the floor try not to move the pelvis at all and just exhale to twist and inhale to bring the knee back just getting flexibility into your hip and a little bit of inner and outer thigh working. Then just hold and push up onto the balls of both of the feet. Balance calf muscles working again and swap to the other side. Turn out and turn in. Just getting some flexibility into that hip, but try not to move the pelvis. You can always rest your hands on your pelvis to make sure it stays still. Those headlamps on the hip bones pointing forward all the time. And then coming back to the start position, pushing up onto the balls of the feet, balance and swap. Now maybe you could, instead of having the ball of the foot on the floor, you lift the knee up and you turn it out and you turn it in. But of course, if that's too much, you just leave the ball of the foot on the floor. No bearing, of course, for that standing leg a little bit more now. And then replace the ball of the foot, pushing up and over. And again, you can just stay with the ball of the foot on the floor or you lift the knee up. But the challenge, of course, is to keep your torso stable. Try and keep your knee up level with the hip. Balance. You might find one side is better than the other side. I've got no idea as usual how many I've done, but maybe we'll swap over again. Pushing up and over. So again, you can leave the heel off the floor or you can lift the knee up and balance. Tuck the elbows into the side and hold onto a beach ball. Have a little look over the ball and then twist to the side, but try not to move anything below the waist. Hold and balance, just exhale to twist. Inhale to bring it back, keeping the shoulders down. Nothing moving this time below the waist at all. Replace the foot, push up onto the balls of the feet and swap and again you can hold it there with the heel off the floor do a little twist or you can lift the knee up and balance and twist so this of course is more challenging keeping the hips and the knees pointing forward and just look over the ball exhale to twist inhale to bring it back replace the foot push up and over so again you're back to those calf muscles now this time you can either just leave the heel off the floor, turn the knee out, turn the knee in, and then twist and centre. 
we can lift the knee up underneath the ball, turn the knee out, turn the knee in, and then twist and center. So it's knee out, knee in, twist and center. Maybe one more time. Feel that load bearing on the standing leg and twist and center. Replace the ball of the foot, push up, balance briefly on the balls of both of the feet, swap and go to the other side. And then of course you can lift the knee up under the ball if you want to, or you can leave the ball of the foot on the floor. Then you add your twist and center. Knee turns out, knee turns in, and you twist and you bring it back. And one more time, knee out, knee in, and twist and center. Replace the foot. You might want to just give the legs a little bit of a shake out and then slide the right foot back, press the heel into the floor. Bring the weight forward and press the heel right down into the floor. So you can feel a good stretch through the calf, keeping the chest lifted. And then maybe just swing the arms forward and back. Reaching forward, getting more flexibility into the shoulder. So pressing that heel right down into the floor. Feel a good stretch through the calf. And then lift that back heel, bend both the knees, and then just push that hip forward, you've got that stretch in the front of the hip. A little bit of balance, you've got to keep those core muscles switched on, and then maybe just lean back a little bit, keep the shoulders level, keep the chin down over the peach, and feel the stretch in the front of the hip. Balance. And stretch. And then you're ready, just change to the other leg, just slide it back. You can always have the feet apart, remember, to help with the balance, and press the heel right down. Keep the chest up. And then this time, maybe just turn the head and look over that right shoulder. And slowly turn the head. This is going to challenge your balance again. And look over that left shoulder. Gently bring it back. Lift the heel, bend both the knees, push the hip forward through that little lean back again, pushing the hip forward and go again with that head turn. Challenge the balance, but keep the stretch going in the front of the hip. Shoulders back and down, bring it back to centre, lengthen back up. And then if you just want to get your mat, and stand on the back of your mat, back of the head, shoulder blades, buttocks and heels up against that imaginary wall, keeping the chest open, and then squeeze the shoulders up, push the shoulders down. Big shoulder roll, keep the chest open and lifted, and do that little squat again. Take the hips back and down, and then just drop the head, drop the arms, and put the hands onto the floor. So you bend the knees a little bit more and walk out onto the hands and knees. If you are happy on your hands and knees, if you are not, please just lie on your front with the arms stretched out in front of you and the legs out behind. Make sure there's no dip in your back. Tuck the pelvis under. Keep the neck in line with the spine. Eyes focused on the floor. Your feet underneath your chin. And then give you a cup of tea still between the shoulder blades. Cup of tea on the back of the pelvis. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, slide the right foot directly out behind you. And breathe in to slide it back. So you're just sliding out, sliding in. Make sure you've got a full back length between the hands and the knees. They're not too close together. And if you're lying on your front, please just do alternate leg lift. But of course, still with those cups of tea in place, so you're not going to allow your pelvis to rock. And then adding in, when you're on your hands and knees, opposite hand to foot, sliding out, opposite arm and leg. Maybe exhale out and inhale back. Still keeping those cups of tea still. Lying on your front. You would add into that and lift opposite arm and leg, but keeping your torso as stable as you can and your head down. And then see if you can add a lift onto this opposite arm and leg. Just lift, imprint solar foot into wall behind, gently toes and fingers back down and slide back under. Trying to keep you back like a table. And maybe just turn the thumb up 
as you lift, try and get the arm level with the ear. And when you slide the leg out, flex the foot, push the heel away from you. Then your buttock will work a little better. Engaging the tummy, trying to keep you back like a table all the time. Lying in your front, you're still doing opposite arm and leg lift. And then when you're on your hands and knees, what you can do is slide out and lift and hold. Now bring the elbow to the knee and the knee to the elbow and extend out again. So you can forget the cups of tea because you're going to bring your ribs to your hips and your hips to your ribs. And try not to put the hand and the knee back down while you curl in, work that rectus abdominis muscle down the front. Now you're going to do five, seven or ten of those on each side. So carrying on with that while I demonstrate what you would do if you're lying on your front. So if you're on your front, you roll gently over onto your back. Knees up, feet flat on the floor. And then fingertips behind the head, elbows right back, tummy braced. Peach underneath the chin. Breathing in, nod your head, breathing out, curl up and rotate opposite shoulder to knee. So you bring your knee in towards the shoulder, try and keep the elbows as far back as you can. And don't forget to do the curl up first and then the rotation. And again, you can do five, seven or ten of those. Supporting the head, try and keep the elbow right back and then five seven or ten on either side whether you're on your hands and your knees or on your back now if you're on your back and you finish your five seven or ten you can extend the legs out and stretch through the tummy holding that now, if you're on your hands and knees and you've done your five, seven or ten, you would sit back on the heels, let the forehead rest down, take the arms behind your palms up and rotate those wrists. Just ease out the wrists. And then you can, because you've been working your tummy muscles as well, Come into a sitting position and do your controlled roll back onto the mat, link by link, bone by bone. And then you take the arms over the top of your head and stretch through. Stretch those tummy muscles. Keep breathing full and wide. And then you've had a very good stretch there through your tummy, through your hip flexors. Just roll gently over, please, onto your right side. Take a moment to set that up. Take the arm back a little bit, then you've got a nice straight line from the fingertips to the back of the head, to the shoulder blades, to the buttocks and the heels. Remember, you can always check if you've got a straight line by turning your toes up. If you can see too much of your toes, you take your legs back. If you can't see your toes at all, you bring your feet forward. And then try and have your waist lifted a little bit off your little flat, hot stone. Shoulders, hips, knees and ankles are stacked, rolling that top hip slightly forward, then you're balancing on the bony side of your pelvis. Keep lengthening through the legs, pointing the toes if that's comfortable. If it gives you cramp, then of course you could flex the feet instead. And then keeping that cup of tea still, that top shoulder down. Exhale, lift the leg up as high as you can, but without rolling the hip back. Hold to breathe in and breathing out to lower the leg about three quarters of the way down to hip height. Hold to breathe in, breathing out to lift. Keep the knee and the toes facing forward and then lower again, just three quarters of the way down. Hold to breathe in, breathing out to lift. Hold to breathe in and breathing out to lower, just to that hip height. And then once you've got that going, of course, you can challenge your balance with where you put that top hand. So you're holding on the in-breath and then lifting on the out-breath. Holding on the in-breath and lowering on the out-breath. So you decide where that top hand needs to go to help you 
or to challenge you. So you can feel that outside hip and thigh working, core muscles working to balance. Make sure that top leg lifts as high as it can, but without allowing the hip to roll back. So you should feel that outside hip and thigh starting to work now. And you decide where you need or want to put that top arm. Remember just turning your right palm up, just that small movement would make it more challenging. Now see if you can lift the top leg, lower the top leg. Now lift the bottom leg up and squeeze. Lower the bottom leg, keep the top leg where it is. And then exhale up, inhale, hold. Exhale, lower, inhale, hold. Exhale, bottom leg up, inhale, squeeze and lower. And then you're ready to lift that top leg again. And again, you put that left hand wherever you need it to be. So you're gonna really feel that outside hip and thigh work, core muscles work to balance, getting some flexibility into your hip, of course, as we lift and lower the leg. And you decide how many you want to do, and of course, where you put that top hand. Trying to keep balanced all the time. Keep the head down, the neck relaxed, and then when you think you've done enough, particularly that top leg, the outside hip and thigh working, and the inner thigh working on that bottom leg as you lift, core muscles to balance. When you think you've done enough, you just hold and then lower the legs and maybe just bend the knees forward and give that outside hip a little rub and a smack and just get rid of the burn that's probably been going on in there. Just give a little rub and a smack. And then if you just want to gently please roll over onto your back. Take a moment to set this up. Bring your chin down over the peach. Stretch your fingertips towards your toes. Relax the neck, relax the shoulders. Remember you could always put a cushion, a little cushion underneath your head if you feel that your chin is tilting up too much. And just get that chin to tilt down. And then orange between the knees, shoulders, hips, knees and ankles aligned. And then bracing the tummy, it'll grape in the small of your back of course, and trade marbles across the pelvis. Breathing in, nod your head, but leave the back of the head on the floor. Pick up the peach and curl forward, crush the grape. Look underneath the orange, reach towards your ankles. Hold it there, and see if you can reach round your thighs with your fingertips, as if you're trying to get them to touch together and then gently roll it back down. Arms, shoulder blades, shoulders and head. Breathing in to nod, breathing out to curl up and push. Hold to breathe in, try and get those fingertips to touch. Hold it there, and then on the out breath, you gently take it back down again. So it's just breathing in to nod, breathing out, curl up, crush the grape, look underneath the orange, push forward, ribs to hips, and then gently on the out breath, you take it back down again. Remember, you can always support the head with one hand while you do this. Pressing your head into your hand and your hand into your head while you reach forward and then take it back down. And then maybe swap hands. Keeping the elbow back, curling up, reach to support the head and then gently take it back down. If you can, you're reaching forward with both the hands. And then curling forward and unless you've got very long arms you're highly unlikely to get your fingertips to touch but that's what you're trying to do and then just take it back down so really working into rectus abdominis down the front the transversus to keep you stable and getting flexibility into your spine trying to keep the neck as relaxed as you can remember you can always push your tongue up into the roof of your mouth to try and relax the front of your throat and then you decide how many things you would like to do. Feel those tummy muscles work. And then you can stay with that or you 
could add on. Breathing in, nod your head, breathing out, curl up, reach forward to breathe in, breathing out, arms to ears, and then breathing in, sweep round, push forward again, and then gently on the out breath you go down. Breathing in to nod, breathing out to curl, push, hold to breathe in. Make sure the shoulders don't go back towards the floor as you circle those arms. Another little push before you bring it back down. And of course you can support the head with one hand while you reach with the other arm and then circle with one arm rather than both arms and then maybe change arms. So again, you decide how many you're going to do. Give it a good push forward. Sweeping round, make sure those shoulders don't go back towards the floor. And then I'm going to do one more, but you decide. You can stop the video and do a few more if you feel you can. Reaching and gently take it back down. And when you've done enough, you let the head roll from side to side and just ease out any tension in the neck. Then bring the neck back into alignment. Check your position. Chin down over the peach. It'll break in the small of your back. Tray wobbles across your pelvis. And this time, on the left knee, a glass of Prosecco. And then without allowing that pelvis to move, so you might just want to rest your hands on your pelvis to check there's no movement going on. Drop your right knee out to the side. Keep the heel in line with the sit bone. Tilt, send the leg all the way out, straighten the leg, and then slide the foot back in. So you're doing a drop to the side, but without the left hip lifting, literally slide the side of the foot out while keeping the glass of Prosecco still, and slide back in. So what it's not, it's not a drop and then unbend the leg out off the mat. You're keeping it in line with your hip. So maybe exhale out, inhale, extend, exhale, turn up the knee and the toes and inhale, slide it back. Now, if that is enough for you, and those core muscles are working hard enough, getting flexibility into your hip, of course, then you stay with that. Otherwise, keeping that Prosecco still, lift the leg up, and then you can drop the knee, literally unbend, sweep it round, and then pull it back up to take the top. So again, exhale out, Inhale, unbend, sweep it round as you exhale, turn the knee and the toe up, and inhale to bring it back. And again, what it isn't, is you let the knee go out and then just extend it towards the floor, and then bring it round and up. It is literally unbending from the knee. Sweeping around, lots of flexibility into your hip and knee, and of course, your core muscles are working really hard. Getting a bit of stretch to the hamstring there as well. And then when you've done a few of those, you hold it there. Don't forget to check that Prosecco. And then start to circle the knee in the air. Just hold it tabletop and just circle the knee. Again, still keeping that pelvis absolutely stable. Now, if you can, you would straighten the leg up towards the ceiling. Now, if your hamstrings are really tight and your leg is bending anyway, then just take it back to the tabletop. But if you can, straight leg, which will make a little bit more challenging for your core muscles and also give you a bit of a stretch for your hamstring. And then change direction, make the circle go the other way, either bent knee or straight knee. And then see if you can hold it up, breathe in, nod your head, breathe it out, curl up. And then go with the circling. Keep circling the leg. If that's too much, just leave the head and shoulders on the floor. Or, of course, you can support the head with one hand or both hands. And if you wanted to work that a little bit harder, you would hover that left foot off the floor, which is going to make it even more challenging. But you decide how many circles you're going to do. Keep the head shoulders up, support the head if you need to, really feel those tummy muscles work and still getting some flexibility into that hip. Then when you've done enough of those, 
Put one foot down, the other foot down. Roll all the way down and then again let the head roll from side to side and just ease out the neck again. Just ease it out. Relax the neck, relax the shoulders, check your position, brace in the tummy. And then of course you have to go to the other side. Put the Prosecco on that right knee and let your left knee drop out. Extend out, turn the knee and the toes up and slide back in. Keeping that right foot rooted into the floor. And of course, just monitoring your position with your hands if you feel you need to. And then, so you're working into that a little bit out of thigh. Quadricep, a little bit of inner thigh and hamstring. And of course, if you want to make that harder, you bring that leg to tabletop, keeping that right foot rooted in, allow the knee to drop unbend, sweep round and bring it back. So really encouraging lots of flexibility into the hip and the knee, stretching through that hamstring. Remember it's an unbend from the knee there. So it's literally unbending. Keeping that right hip glued onto the floor. So lots of flexibility, but really working those deep stabilizer muscles while you do that, but of course you can. Leave the foot on the floor if your hamstrings are too tight. Then you hold the leg up and go with the circling, just circling the knee. Still keeping that pelvis stable and that glass of Prosecco still. Then of course if you want to, you straighten the leg up and go with the circling. Maybe one circle on an in-breath, one circle on an out-breath, or even half a circle on an in-breath, half a circle on an out-breath. Some really hard work for that inner thigh there as well. That's the core. And then hold, and then maybe make that circle go the other way. So you're circling it around. And then just nod the head and curl up and circle the leg. Make sure that you have changed direction. I don't think it did there. So make sure you change direction. Curling forward, pushing forward. And again, you can always change direction. And keep going. And if you want to, you can hover the foot off the floor. And crush the grape, don't forget your peach. Support the head if you need to. Again, you can always change direction with the circling. Keep that great crushed. Do as many as you feel you can manage. You can always leave the head and shoulders on the floor if it's too much. And then when you're done, put one foot down, other foot down, roll all the way down. And then just stretch the legs out, take the arms over the top of your head and give yourself a full body stretch from the tips of your fingers to the tips of your toes. Lengthen and stretch, breathe full and wide. Have a really good stretch. And then when you've had a good stretch, just bring the arms back down by your side and let the head roll from side to side and ease out any tension left in the neck. Stretching the fingertips towards the toes, get the length through the neck. And then from there, the best way you know how, take yourself onto your left side. So you might just want to take the arms over the top of your head, bringing in, nod your head, float the arms up towards the ceiling, breathing out, peel yourself off. Or of course, you can pull up with your leg or push up with your hands in the small of your back. And then take yourself on to your left side. Nice straight line. Remember, you can always bring the arm forward and put a cushion underneath if it's not comfortable for your shoulder with the arm underneath your head. Um, and just check you've got that nice straight line so you're parallel to the edge of your mat. Waist lifted a little bit off that hot stone. And then maybe starting off with the hand in front. And then just lengthen through the legs. Keep your cup of tea on the outside of your hip, shoulder down, neck long. And then exhaling, maybe point the toes and lift the top leg. 
and then hold to breathe in and breathing out to lower but just um, three quarters of the way down hold to breathe in breathing out to lift hold to breathe in breathing out to lower so that's all you're doing just lifting and holding as high as you can but keeping the knee and the toes facing forward so you're not rolling your hip back making that cup of tea come off keep lengthening through that bottom leg because it will try to bend to help you balance especially when you challenge yourself with where you put that right hand just lift hold lower and hold and then you challenge yourself with the position of that top arm Remember, you can take the arm over the top of your head. Just turning that left palm up would make the whole thing more challenging to keep that cup of tea still. Keep lengthening through that bottom leg. Keep lengthening through the top leg. Keep that torso as stable as you can with that top hand wherever you want it to be. Then, of course, you would add in that bottom leg. Lift and lower. Hold. And then bring that bottom leg up into the top leg. Now you might need to put that hand in front of you to facilitate that. Now you don't lower the top leg, you keep it hip height and then you lift, hold to breathe in, breathing out to lower and then hold to breathe in, breathing out, lift the bottom leg up, squeeze them together and then breathing at the end of the in breath you lower the leg down and putting that right hand wherever you need it to be exhale up inhale hold exhale lower inhale hold exhale lift inhale squeeze and at the end of that in breath you lower the leg so it's just top leg lower it bottom leg squeeze and lower that bottom leg so you're working into the outside of the hip and thigh on that top leg and then the inner thigh on that bottom leg. But as you lift the leg, the waist upper and lower is going to work as well as those core muscles working really, really hard. Lift, hold and balance, lowering the leg. And again, you do as many repetitions as you can manage. That outside hip and thigh is really gonna kick in now. So lifting just as high as you can, but without turning the hip back. And then we've done enough repetitions. You would hold, squeeze, lower the legs. But remember, you can do more. And then bring the knees forward and give the outside of the hip a little rub and a smack. And just get rid of any burn that you've got going on in there now. And then if you just want to gently, please roll over onto your front. Starting off level one, arms out to the side, crucifix position, bend the elbows at a 90 degree angle. So the elbows are up level with the shoulders, lengthening through the legs. Peach underneath the chin, tummy button of course pulled up off your hot stone. Slide shoulder blades down your back. And then just take a breath in and as you breathe out, lift the head the shoulders off the floor and breathe in to go down now you can have your cheek turned to the side exhale up turn the head look at the floor and then gently take it back down or if you can forehead on the floor and then just exhale up and inhale down keeping that cup of tea on the back of your pelvis working into the back trying not to push with the arms now that would be level one Next level up, if you can, bring the hands underneath the armpits with the thumbs glued into the side of the rib cage, elbows pointing up towards the ceiling, so the arms tucked into the side. And then exactly the same thing, exhale to lift and inhale to lower. So either cheek turned to the side or forehead down. But keep your pitch underneath your chin so there's no strain on the neck. Exhaling up and inhaling down. So either one of those. And then if you're doing this one, see if you can add on to that. See if you can 
lift up all the way up and straighten the arms and then sit back onto the heels try not to move the hands at all and then gently bring it back shoulders over the hands tuck the elbows into the side and slowly lower down so you do exhale push up inhale sit back it doesn't matter if you hips don't go right back onto the heels try not to move the arms otherwise it all goes wrong when you bring the weight forward again make sure you're not dropping your hips keep the elbows tucked right into the side and just lower your hips by bending the elbows then it's the backs of the arms that are doing all the work and then again just pushing all the way up as you exhale inhale sit back and then exhale to bring it back and inhale to lower down. Keep those elbows tucked right into the side. Then you work your bigger wing department. If that's too much, of course, you could just leave the arms crucifix position and then just lift and lower. You could straighten the arms, working into your back, getting some flexibility into your spine. And of course, load bearing for your wrists. But if you can, just continuously smooth Blow it and continuous movement. You can just stay with that, keeping those elbows tucked in, or you could make it a little bit more challenging. Keep lengthening through those legs, um, and you could see if you can just exhale all the way up and breathing in, take it all the way down, and just repeat that. So you're lifting up, controlling your hips with your tummy muscles. Keep that tummy button pulled up and in all the time. Pushing up. That's too much, you just stay with the pushing back onto the heels every time. Smooth and flowing. Or you could make it harder. You can lift all the way up and then take it halfway down. Pushing up and halfway down. So maybe you're not dropping your hips you're literally just bending the elbows. Keep the elbows tucked right into the side. And if that's too much, you go all the way down, come all the way up, that'll be a little bit easier. Or you can still go back onto the heels. You decide, and again, how many are you gonna do? Really feel the backs of the arms working. Load bearing for the wrists, promoting bone growth in the wrists, and those core muscles working to keep your pelvis stable. And then we've done enough just relax back down and then just come up onto the hands and knees then arch the back drop the head pull the tummy button up and in and stretch your back so maybe come up onto the knuckles if that's more comfortable and just do a big arch maybe bring the hands closer in towards your knees but keep the head down and then crossing the arms please at the wrists because you've also been working across the upper back so again drop the head look back and press down through the palms of the hands or the knuckles and then when you're ready change the cross over and do it again open up between the shoulder blades as well as from the back of your neck all the way down to your tail and then coming into a sitting position please just bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees flop apart stretch those inner thighs let the weight of your legs take your knees towards the floor keep the chest open Shoulders back and down. Make sure the shoulders don't creep up round the ears. Maybe slide the heels a little bit closer in towards your body. Get a really good stretch in those inner thighs. Holding that there. Let the weight of your legs do the work. Flexibility for your hips too. And then relax, stretch the legs out and then put the right foot over the left thigh. And then that left arm goes around the leg and you hug it into the chest. Take that 
right hand behind, sit up tall and rotate. Hug the leg in, looking over that right shoulder, maybe breathe in and as you breathe out, twist a little bit further, stretching around the middle and the neck as well as the outside of the hip and thigh, right down into the buttock and then change. So putting that left foot over, right arm round, hug right into the chest, left hand behind, push up tall and rotate. Hold that there. Hugging the leg right in, breathing in, breathing out and twist that little bit further. Turn the head, look a little further back. And then just relax. And then pop the legs over onto one side. Come onto the hands and knees. Walking the hands into the knees. Tuck the toes under, hover the knees, push the hips up into the air. Walk the hands in until the heels are flat on the floor. Hold it there and now straighten the legs. Bottom up, straight legs. Now you might need to come up a little bit to get your legs straight. To get a really good stretch in the hamstrings. Keep the head down and the neck relaxed. Pushing back and then release, bend the knees a little bit and do it again. Push back. Get a really good stretch behind the knees, up into the thighs, holding that there. And then bend the knees slightly and slowly come up. Link by link, let your breathing flow all the way up against that imaginary wall. Holding that there. And then lift the right arm up, drop the hand behind your head and ease the arm back. Stretch the back of the arm, keep that tailbone pointing down, keep the zip up and hollow and the other arm, arm by the ear, ear by the arm, drop down, push back, because if you press up the knees, so you need to stretch the backs of the arms. Ease it back. And then just release, keep the shoulders back and down, lengthening up, drop that right ear, while you slide your left hand down, seam of trouser neck. Hold that there, stretch neck, stretch shoulder. Turn the head and look down at that right shoulder. Try not to move your body at all. Turn the head and look up and behind to the left. Again, getting some flexibility into your neck. Drop the chin all the way down into the chest like those shoulder blades down. Tailbone pointing down, you've still got your zip up and hollow, pulling up and pulling in. And then lifting the head up. Drop that left ear while the right hand slides down. Stretch, neck, stretch, shoulder. Turning the head, looking down at the left shoulder. Again, you're trying not to move your torso at all while you turn your head and look up to the right, up and behind to the right, as far back as you can. But without twisting the body. And then gently dropping the chin back down into the chest lifting the head and release the shoulders forward up and round and back and down just get those shoulders moving because you've done quite a bit of load bearing on those shoulders and then hold that there and then just rotate your wrists because also you have been load bearing on those wrists first one way and then the other way and taking the legs out nice and wide Turn out the knees, turn out the toes, keeping the chest lifted. And slide you back down that imaginary wall and reach up. So maybe breathing in, breathing out, stretch all the way up and down. And again, reaching up and down. And then relax. And then, of course, you can always give yourselves a clap. Well done. There we are, number 29. And I'm so pleased you're still there. And again, thank you very much for all those very great, very generous contributions. And um, please stay with me and keep fit, keep moving, keep well. See you next time. Bye for now.